so much. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. So I do have some excerpts from a novel I'm working on. It is, I really need to work on the elevator, eh, elevator pitch more. And I should have done that before I got on stage. But I would describe it as there's high fantasy and low fantasy. I would say it's gutter fantasy. <laughs> it's in a world of magic. What's the person who runs the bar at 2 a.m. doing? What's the store clerk at that shop where you get your potions to heal? How's their depression going? Who are they hooking up with? If their boss gets kidnapped and they find his severed hand on the ground, do they care? Maybe they do. Maybe their boss supplies them with the things they need to live. So maybe they have to go fight a dragon. So I'm gonna read a few excerpts from that novel that is very, very much a work in progress. And then I have one piece about a woman who died in 1587. The first excerpt is about the character Maeve, who, when her boss is kidnapped, begins going through a psychotic break because she doesn't have the potions he gives her to live. She could feel the wasps attempting to emerge out of her pores, a scratching, wriggling, itching sensation. Maeve sank to the floor behind the store counter, hiding behind a myriad of glass bottles and figurines of deities. She buried her face in her hands, nails digging at her skin as in hope of beheading the creatures burrowing out of her cheeks. The drag of nails never caught on anything besides smooth skin. That was even more alarming. This has to be real. I can't be imagining. I don't have time for hallucinations. Something swelled in Maeve's throat and she struggled to breathe around it. The bell chimed at the store as the store door swung open. Maeve peeked over the counter. Hi, how's it going? You looking for anything in particular or just browsing? <laughs> <laughs> the next excerpt is a description of the building. The building would make a carpenter cringe. Rotten pieces of wood carefully strengthened with support beams. The back wall was covered in a tangled web of ink. The signatures of would-be heroes and tourists who felt it important people knew they had been there. On the stairs, more signatures. Some of regulars, some of budding street artists eager to ply their craft. The signatures on the wall of the privy were the only important. The names and parting messages of previous assistants. They imparted camaraderie and also the encouragement. Some of us leave this job. Of course, leaving didn't always have a 100% success rate. Hugo's name was on the wall in three different places. Maeve washed her hands in the spigot, appreciating the overgrowth of ink and flyers. She thought about what she would put on the wall. Everyone did. It's human nature to muse about legacy, even just a scribble on the privy wall. This last one, I'm unfortunately going to have to do some accents to differentiate characters. I apologize to the British people in advance. <laughs> <laughs> but also reunite Ireland. Behind you, Jeremy said as he placed his hand on the small of Amaya's back. She grabbed his wrist without looking and twisted. A yelp of pain rang out throughout the store. Hugo poked his head around the corner, alarmed. Amaya had Jeremy's hand twisted behind his back. Jeremy's eyes were wide with confusion and panic. Hugo raised an eyebrow, inquisitive, not accusatory. He touched my waist. 
I was just trying to slide past you. Hugo laughed and shook his head. Rookie mistake. Women, people in this neighborhood don't take kindly to surprise touch. You all right? My arm's about to snap off. Wasn't talking to you. Hugo's eyes didn't leave Amaya's face as she spoke. I'm fine. She released the boy. He recoiled from her, rubbing his wrist. Tells you're strong. Tells will do that to you. <laughs> Does everyone here enjoy being cryptic? The boy whined. Hugo shrugged. It's one of the joys of life, right up there with fake life stories and bars. Amaya nodded, walking off to finish counting inventory. Why? Jeremy asked. Why tell lies and bars? What, you've never wanted to be someone else for a bit? See what you can get people to believe? No, I've never wanted to be anybody but me. Hugo blinked. No need to brag. <laughs> <laughs> and my last piece is not from the novel. It is about a woman named Wasperga Hosmarman who was burned at the stake at, on September 20th, 1587. The details of this piece are taken from the arrest records and report of her execution. My husband died before I turned 30, and this is what I get. A cut off hand and hot iron brands, a stake atop a pile of kindling. When your husband dies, and he's a vassal of a lord. You don't get to keep the house for free. I was a midwife. Some babies don't make it. Do I begrudge the mothers their grief? No. I grieved for every one of those lambs I couldn't see grow. But I begrudge them their vengeance. Seduced and beaten, abused for years on end, and in the end, I'm the one to blame. Kindly questioned and tortured. Kindly questioned and tortured. That's how they put it in the report. Kindly questioned and tortured. I would have said anything to make it stop. 30 years. 30 years of stillbirths. 30 years of miscarriages. 30 years of dying babies. I did my duty. Show me a priest that turned to midwifery. Show me a holy man who brings new life into the world and see if they could do better than me. They call me the devil's whore. I'll admit, I was raped by the devil in disguise. 30 years beaten by a married lord and they only intervened to put me to the my life has been filled with death. It's true. I'm 61 years old. Whose is it? They speak of the death, but not the survivor. The 24-year-old man who will put the fire to my stake. I held him as a baby as he came out of his mother. They'll scar and burn my body in different spots about my body and the town. They'll cut off my right hand. Then they'll tie me to a stake and give me a skirt of flames. Seduced my boss. Mm -hmm. The man who controls my ability to eat had no control over that situation. The man in power, helpless against the underlings wild. Not the other way around. That story's old as time and still going. Ash looks. So now, chains rattle wrists, rattle off lists of charges, kindly questioned and tortured, adorned with scars, burns, and a skirt of flames. I pay for the crime, but sometimes babies die. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.